Hey, morning guys. Uh, this will be the last lecture um, for Module 21B and the last lecture that I'm going to give um, for history. Uh, I also uh, kind of plan on sending you kind of a, a message uh, for the end of the year uh, and uh, just kind of share some things with you. Okay, um, so today I will be pretty short. Um, Guys, after, you know, we get through the Cold War, through the 1960s, we really start to kind of look back and reflect on, um, you know, the massive changes that take place after World War II in our nation. Um, and one of the things we do is really take a deeper study at our population, okay? The study of population is called demography. And um, after World War II, um, you know, because during the war, everybody was busy, you know, uh, at home on the home front. Uh, soldiers were off the war. Uh, birth, birth rates were decreasing. Um, and so after the war, the Depression was over, and we had all these people coming home. Um, and they were able to find jobs, uh, start businesses, go back to school. And we, of course, had the baby boom, yes? Okay, um, the census, which was, you know, obviously meant to co count the population, becomes more detailed. Okay, um, I got the census filled out the census this year, and it was it was pretty short. Um, but there have been uh, decades where my wife and I got the long form, uh, which asked us things like, how far do you commute to work? How many vehicles do you have? Uh, how many pets do you have? Uh, these sorts of things to kind of give not just government but businesses a better idea uh, of market size. Okay, so you get to do the census every 10 years and then use those that data to plan for, you know, the next 10 years. Uh, so water supply, how much water will Wichita need um, for its people, uh, the impact on uh, commuting, travel, uh, within your city, uh, how many schools, how many police officers, how many hospitals uh, you're going to need uh, looking into the future. And then businesses can go to the census and pick up uh, market size, predict market size. They can look at how many people on the west side of Wichita have pets or north northeast Wichita, um, these sorts of things. Um, so they can decide whether they want to open a pet store there, that sort of thing. Okay. So, uh, obviously, guys, we get into a population explosion, the baby boom. Uh, people now had money. Uh, we also had a lot of refugees. Um, uh, from, from the war, from World War II, we had refugees. Um, obviously, Jews. Um, you had people fleeing communism. Uh, you get to the Vietnam War. Obviously, we've taken a lot of refugees from that. Uh, Cuba and, and so forth, okay? This puts a strain on cities, bigger hospitals, police force, firefighters, and you can look at the population here uh, growing pretty quickly, especially here between 60 and 70. Um, we we're adding like 20 million every 20, well, this is a 10 year, 20 million, uh, not quite 20 million, uh, over 20 million. And today we're at th about 330 million. We'll see what the, the census says uh, this year, okay? Uh, by 1964, California becomes the largest state population-wise. Um, and African Americans, which uh, were mostly in the South, uh, three-quarters of them lived in the South in 1940, um, a lot of those people started migrating north during the war um, for jobs, um, places like Dayton, Ohio, Wichita, Kansas, uh, where we had defense factories, um, and, and a lot of jobs supporting the defense factories, okay? Um, so within a 30-year period, one quarter of all blacks had moved uh, to the north, okay? Uh, moving on. Okay, uh, as far as the general population, uh, 1920, rural and urban population was about evenly split. Um, one in three lived on farms. Um, in 1970, one on one in 22 live on farms, and obviously that that number has uh, changed a lot. 
Um, 6.8 million family farms in 1935, down to 3 million here. That number continues to shrink as uh, farms are consolidated and you get into more large corporate farming. Okay. Uh, in 1820, the average farm worker could maybe feed their family. Okay. In 1955, uh, 15 people, or 1950, it could feed 15 people for a year. Okay. And 45 people in 1970. Today, I looked this up this morning. Uh, the average farmer can feed 155 people for a year. Okay. Uh, we also see people moving um, out of the cities uh, in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, we see this. Uh, this is called suburban sprawl. Okay. 35% uh, lived in cities in 1950, 27% in suburbs. And you see that begin to flip. Uh, and that's continued um, where you see, you know, your outlying communities, your Andover, your uh, your Mays, your your Bel Air, um, Derby. OK. And so, like, for example, where a lot of you guys live now uh, in West Wichita, I mean, where Bishop Carroll was, Bishop Carroll used to be kind of on the outskirts of town. OK. Um, you could go over to Tyler Road and there was just not much there. Where I live on Woodlawn, when I when we moved here 25 years ago, um, I mean, the, not, hardly any of this stuff was out here. Um, it's, it's, you know, like a concrete paradise. <laughs> All right. So uh, we continue to move out instead of up. There was a point where we were moving up in the city, skyscrapers and buildings and so forth. Um, you do see some nice urban re revitalization in the United States. I mean, even in Wichita, you see people trying to move back downtown. Uh, a lot of times those are young professionals that aren't married yet. Uh, can live down near work where they work and you have kind of the the urban nightlife and uh, that sort of thing um, so I mean some of our cities have done a really good job Baltimore's downtown's really nice um, you know New York City even um, you know during the 80s and 90s uh, under Giuliani um, I mean really it became a safe place to go I mean New York has been a fairly safe large city when you look at things like murder rates and so forth. Uh, New York's pretty low compared to, you know, cities like New Orleans, Detroit, uh, Los Angeles, and so forth. So um, a lot of that deals with good governance um, and, and culture. So, um, so anyhow, um, this happened by 1970, more than half of the population lived within 50 miles of one of the two oceans, one of the two coasts, the Gulf of Mexico and the Great Lakes. OK, so a lot of, you know, people living near water. OK, now, as you guys know, the Rust Belt, once a lot of our industry got exported uh, to Mexico and China and overseas, um, People started leaving states like New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan. They started losing population, and that trend has been mostly south to Texas, Florida, uh, west to Arizona, even you know going to the west coast, north, north, northwest, uh, the great northwest, uh, Washington State, Seattle area has boomed, uh, Oregon, uh, and so forth. And now uh, you're, you're seeing people go to Colorado. Uh, and, and Idaho, which is a state that is, was sparsely populated, a lot of those people are leaving California and going to places like that. Um, so it's interesting to watch the population shift. Uh, Kansas kind of stayed, you know, kind of stayed the same um, over the last few decades. Um, yeah, you know, you guys live here, you know what it's like. <laughs> okay. Um, a mobile people. Um, 1970, the census found that 36 million people moved that year. Doesn't necessarily mean they moved states, but they moved. Um, more than a quarter of people in 1970 were living in a state they were not born. Okay, so I like to ask that question in class. I say, how many of you guys were not born in Kansas? Okay, and sometimes I'll just get, you know, one or two hands, and, and that's pretty common. Um, if I were to ask that same question in a state like Florida or Texas, okay, or Arizona, 
I'd probably see a lot more hands go up that weren't born in that state that moved to that state, if that makes sense, okay? Um, so we are mobile. It's one of the great things about this, this country is we have 50 different, 50 different state governments that are all different. Uh, some of them you don't have to pay state income taxes. Um, some of them, the, you know, the culture, you like it better, the, the work environment, um, the climate. Uh, all sorts of things. We have that freedom of movement, and uh, it's pretty great. I mean, I've lived in uh, Illinois, Indiana, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, and now Kansas. So I've lived in six different states. Okay, so don't know what your plans are, but you'll figure it out over time. Okay, uh, with the concentration of black people in the cities uh, like Cleveland, Chicago, um, you see an increased political power. Atlanta. Um, and this can really drive uh, the Electoral College. Um, and so uh, their support, African-American support of Kennedy and Carter helped provide narrow margins of victory. We start to see uh, African-Americans uh, rise to the political top, uh, being mayors of large cities like Atlanta, Los Angeles, Detroit. And then of course, an aging population, um, Life expectancy, guys. Um, this is this is dated a little bit. Um, the life expectancy today uh, for most Americans is around uh, 79 years old. Okay, um, we are starting to see that slow down a little bit, um, and we'll see what happens. Um, obviously, Corona. You know, I mean, we've lost a lot of people, um, but a lot of the people that are dying are older. Uh, so it does, it's just, it's maybe not extending life as long. Um, the nursing home, I think when you start to look at this, guys, at the number of people in nursing homes um, that have died from this, and some stuff's coming out of New York that's just horrifying. Um, this has been the toughest on our elderly populations and those with obviously with pre-existing conditions. Um, so that's my last slide, guys. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'm going to put together a little message for everybody and uh, uh, really do miss you guys. It's uh, been hard doing this from the basement and um, trying to keep it as interesting as possible. Uh, I've been watching the number of views that I've had on these on these lectures drop steadily, which, hey, look, I get it, man. Um, who wants to sit down in front of a computer? Um, that seems what I do a lot these days, so, and I'm pretty tired of it myself. Um, but I really do, I hope you guys are well, and, um, you know, hopefully summer's around the corner and things are opening back up, and uh, you guys can you know, start school, get jobs, have some fun, go to the lake and um, enjoy it. They are saying, you know, getting sun is a good thing. The weather kind of stinks the next few days, but um, get outside, uh, get exercise, breathe, um, and, and hopefully you get to enjoy your senior summer a little bit, okay? All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.